to speak and to intervene. Very rarely he came to the house to intervene for a private member's bill. So I was wondering what is going to happen. And when I spoke, he listened very, very nicely. I spoke three quarters of an hour. And then finally he said, I feel very deeply moved, but I want to propose the appointment of a committee to go into this matter and so on. Of course he misunderstood because he said, how can you live if you can't kill an insect and so on and so on and uh, we can't have, sorry, impose vegetarianism upon people. Well, it wasn't a vegetarian bill by any means, but somebody had presented that idea to him. Anyway, in deference to his wishes, I accepted and a committee was formed. Mr. V.K. Krishnamanan was the chairman of the committee. I became the vice chairman and we toured India all over India. We sent out questionnaires, we toured India, we took evidences of people and I assure you, as a result of that experience, I am not at all anymore an expert on kindness. I am an expert only on cruelty. Because I have discovered many new cruelties which I had never heard of before. And even today I am hearing new things. Every day my knowledge on this subject is growing because I am discovering what man is capable of. And I not only know what is happening in India, I have come to know so much of what is happening in Western worlds too because this gave me an international contact with many organizations. Well anyway, as a result of this tour, we went to slaughterhouses, <coughs> can you imagine what horrible experience? We went to laboratories because it's a government body, we were allowed to go right into anything. We went to laboratories, we saw how the animals were kept, we, we, we even saw some of the experiments. Unfortunately, you can imagine what it was, harrowing experience it was for me. We went to zoos, we went behind the circuses, every possible thing. And I had a thorough knowledge from the inside of what is happening. And we produced a report, very comprehensive report, which the secretary of the committee, who was not at all in favor of this bill, um, tried to change and word in such a way that it will be not quite so drastic as I might have made it. Well, um, then one of the proposals of that committee was that there should be an animal welfare board. And that is how later on the government took up this and as a result of that report brought a bill itself, a government bill, and that law came to, into existence two years ago and also this animal welfare board which was formed. Of course the law is different from what I had but it is still really far better than what was there before and I am always thankful for small mercies. I do not mind what differences of opinion people have as long as people are helping in some aspect of animal welfare. So we are now busy with this board trying to develop the work in India, to plan on human education, education of the masses, education of children in schools. We are hoping to bring out textbooks and I am going to try to persuade the government in each state because the education is a state subject to accept these textbooks for children in the schools so that there could be humane education. Then over and above that, we have, tried, we have to help SPCAs, humanitarian organizations, to develop new organizations and to do everything we possibly can for the promotion of kindness to animals in India. So this is very important work. One of the first things I did was to start a magazine, a sample of which is here. Any of you who wishes to um, have copies, you can write to India, you can get it. As far as subscription is concerned, it's only so far for India you may give what you like or need not give if you do not want to. It's called the Animal Citizen, that is the name I gave, because I have given citizenship rights to the animals even if nobody else has given it. And so that is the name of that. And this is our work in India and like this I feel we have a great work to do in the whole world because there are thousands of cruelties. There may be one kind of cruelty in India, there is another kind of cruelty in the West. There is a vivisection, 
there are these industries failing industries fire industries and many other industries which are producing most horrible cruelty and people are so thoughtless they do not know what they are doing to the world they don't know what the world will be without animals of course you know i have a feeling that in many ways animals are far superior to human beings in character because whenever i have seen a dog i it has a thought has struck me long ago one day one of my friends unconsciously rode when they were on a car in a car and rode over a dog it cried and we felt miserable we got down and stroked the dog and the dog licked the hand and wagged its tail i got this poor dog which has been ill treated all its life even at that time just that one little act of kindness has produced that reaction in its heart while what does a human being do and i have contacted many you may help them all your life but do just one thing which they don't like they won't forget that one act and they will forget all the nice things you have done to them in life so that is the fundamental difference which i see between the animal and the human being and another thing is that the animal is only nature animal is most afraid of of fire but i am sure if you ask the animal would you prefer fire or man it would rather have fire than man because actually man is the worst enemy of the animal kingdom and as mark twain has said man is the only creature that can blush and needs to and i agree we are the only creatures that can blush and need to and surely we must remove this block upon our civilization it is a very sad and a very unfortunate thing but i hope that they through a small beginning great results will follow never never feel ashamed of this work that is that we you are doing for the animal kingdom many times people have congratulated me on my work and say how wonderful what you are doing etc etc many things but i say to them don't congratulate me because i want no congratulations from human beings i want congratulations only from the animal kingdom and that will be expressed through their well being and their happiness and so when i see that then only i know that we are doing something good for the world and for me spiritual life is this expression of the divine compassion which enfolds every living creature in its heart i sometimes feel that i can hear the voice of animals crying out the voiceless voice of animals crying out for help and our are we have to answer and say whether we are their friends or not and their voice cannot be heard they cannot have unions they cannot have labor unions to fight for their rights and we have to fight for them that is our privilege and our opportunity and i would like to close with these words because if you like to ask any questions you may ask me but i hope you understand though i speak very very strongly it's because i really feel very deeply moved in my heart for this great work i am supposed to be an artist i came into parliament because i am an artist and i people ask me what has art to do with animals i said it has everything to do with animals because the highest art is to know how to live and the highest art the most beautiful thing in 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 humanity is compassion and he who is compassionate he is ultimately to me the greatest artist of all earth ladies and gentlemen i now by your applause that you have enjoyed the say extraordinary <coughs> frank lecture on the animal kingdom and welfare and on vegetarianism the way to live and also that you realize 
It's a very wonderful work that that lady, lady has done and is doing in this field of animal welfare and protection. Now, there is no doubt that many of you will want to ask questions on these matters, and I'll leave this subject for the time being. But in the meantime, so that you will have time to think out your questions, and I will ask our secretary to make announcements of meetings, etc., activities.